Still using mouse. I ain't got no shame. Oh, no question. Oh my goodness. Give me, you can give me a laptop without a mouse. I'm connecting them. I'm connecting one. I'm looking for a mouse to connect. Yes, indeed. Yep. Me too. I'm looking for a mouse to connect. Because, uh, Nakia, I just I made it live. So it okay. should be there. All right. This meeting is being streamed live. Now streaming live on Facebook. Yes, indeed. Uh oh. All right. Let's get started. As soon as I yep. send this book to people. Okay. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I'll I just wanted to make sure it was up. I'll take that moment to put the Kool Aid in the refrigerator. <laughs> Ain't no shame. There we go. Turn that down. Share it. Folk when a cold cup of Kool Aid up in here, so it's gonna be cold for them when they get here. Right. All right, it's posted. Amen. All right, ladies, we're about to get started. It is 2 32. Mm-hmm. What they what do you say? Everybody be like, you sound like a bundle for two, two, two. <laughs> so sometimes mm-hmm. it just comes off that way. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. But we're gonna get started. I want to thank everybody for joining us for the second installment of Sister to Sister. Um, we are going to pray in, and then after that, we're going to get started. Hope to see you on Facebook Live, and hope to see you in our Zoom. So we're going to pray in, and then we're going we're going to talk about it. Who told you it was going to be easy? All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's let us pray. Father God, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for allowing us to be here. We want to thank you for the sisterhood that we have, that we have created, not only in Baltimore City, but just worldwide for those who are joining us via Facebook, for those who are joining us via via Zoom. Just want to thank you, Lord, for um, the outlet to be able to um, allow these things to happen. I want to thank you for all those that are going to participate. Thank you for Sister Whitfield for being with us today um, to just share in your great news and your gospel, Father God. We want to thank you for the inner city church of Christ that allows us to be able to have this platform where we can talk and have conversations about the things that you would have us to do. Please forgive me for my sins and all things um, that this prayer and this um conversation may not be hindered. I just want to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came and down the cross, that we may have life and have more abundantly. And in Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. All right, ladies, I'm so glad that um, y'all are able to join us today. And we have with us Sister Whitfield, Sister Chanel Whitfield, coming to you from In the City Church of Christ. Um, I'm going to let her talk about herself i have known her since i was a young girl going to um central church of christ and i grew up with her son george he may be a little bit younger than me but you know he came up with me i know that young man um and i just want to thank god for having her on today to join us and the title is who told you it was going to be easy it's the build up Okay, I'm going to call that the build up for the year. We are building up in faith building. We're going to um, just have conversations about how faith building works, what you should want from your faith, what um, you should be getting from your faith. Um, a lot of us be like, you know, I don't feel like I'm growing spiritually. A lot of times we hear, um, please pray for my spiritual growth. And we're going to talk about how spiritual growth actually happens. And we think it's something easy. We think it's something that comes through osmosis. And we think it's something that just happens after baptism. But oh no. You get the gift of the Holy Spirit. But guess what? You have to use it. Okay. You have to put it in play in your life. It's just not something that happens all willy-nilly. Okay. You got to put some work into it. So we're going to talk about that work after Sister Chanel um, introduces herself and tell us about herself and we just going to go get right into it. So, Sister Chanel, the floor is yours. You had to unmute yourself. 
though. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Good afternoon, everybody. It is a pleasure to uh, be here and to speak to you and just give you a little bit about me and how I came to the church and the understanding of it was not going to be easy. I think I stepped in thinking it's going to be easy because I didn't think it would be about me. When I came, I was 24. I uh, had a son and he was four. And I thought, hey, I'm, I'm coming here. I'm trying to find the Lord because I know that me and this man that had this child have no idea. We don't have a clue. And I didn't necessarily grow up and uh, a quote unquote spiritual home, but I had a mother um, that constantly used and encouraged us with godly principles. Um, you know, things like discipline and time management and um, faith, even faith, you know. I was a, I think about myself as a, I was a Daniel. I was a three times a day praying, not even knowing that thing ain't doing nothing but hitting the ceiling and coming back. But I prayed all the time. I prayed, but uh, I said, yeah, I said, um, I, I, I got to get this child. He needs to know God because God probably said, look, girl, you have made the biggest. Uh, and I tell you something, let me go back before I go there. I had never heard the word sin before. You know, where I grew up, I heard abomination. So I was familiar with mm -hmm. abomination. You know, I heard mm -hmm. ladies in the neighborhood, that's an abomination. You know, they would say things like that to us mm -hmm. when, we, when we were wrong or did something bad or whatever. Um, and I never heard of sin before. But in my mind, I said, oh, I think I've committed the ultimate abomination because uh, I, I had this kid out of wedlock and and uh, I got to get this kid right because, you know, God done with me, you know. Um, but little did I know, little did I know that he wouldn't be able to get right unless I got right. Because to him, I was his God. I was the one who was to teach him and to explain to him what he was hearing from the pulpit and what he was hearing in Bible study classes and things of that nature. So I was very surprised. And I, you know, I was, I remember listening. It only took me two Sundays because one of the things I did know is that I only wanted to be a Christian. You know, I'm a person who I don't like nicknames. First of all, I wanted to be the real McCoy or nothing. Don't call me um, anything but my name. My name is Chanel. You know, now, you know, as time went on, you know, my father and, and of course, my husband, I, I, I let them to give me a nickname. So uh, for the most part, they're the only two. And then, OK, all right, you know, I got my I got my, my high school buddies, you know, they call me now booty. So that was uh, that was cool. You know, I, I let them go with that. But in general, I didn't really like nicknames. And to me, not understanding the full extent of what a denomination was. I felt like that was a nickname because I because you know like something inside of me knew that uh, Baptist and Catholic and and and, and Jehovah's Witness and, and Presbyterian and all those things wasn't a Christian and I, like I said I can't tell you how but I knew it I remember when 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 right after I had my son you know uh, that that's that's the thing about my mother she 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 put in us. Uh, principles and, and, and set goals and, 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 and eight months, I said, Hey, I'm going back to work, you know, and then, and then, and then I'm going to go back to college, you know, after a couple of years, I'm going to go back to college. You know, I, I had, I had goals for myself, but then in between those goals, I said, we, we got to find God. We got to find God because in order for me to meet these goals, I need God. I need God to help me because I, I had in my mind, a way of living that I wanted for me and my son. So I said, okay, uh, I went on my quest. And like I said, I was working somewhere. And I remember, I never forget this lady. Uh, she said to me, she was a holiness preacher. And she said to me, well, you know, uh, Christianity is like the head. And then you got all these other things under it. And I looked at her and I said, you know what? Miss so and so, I don't mean no harm, but that doesn't make sense to me. I said, so holiness won't be where I'll be going. I said, uh, I can't go there. 
I said, all I want to be is a Christian. And if you can't tell me what that is, I won't be joining you. And so uh, she, <laughs> she looked at me, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 20 something. And, you know, I'm, 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 I'm feisty. And, you know, because my thing was, again, you know, like I said, we, we, we grew up on these, these, these principles and these old adages. And, and my thing was, look, if you can't show me, I don't believe it. You got to show me. You got it's got to be in writing. And she couldn't show me in writing. And, and I knew she couldn't, you know. And so I said, um, I said, OK, I'm going to continue my quest because what she talking about ain't it. So I continued and um, and I knew uh, I had a cousin, uh, Brother Michael Hughley, and he was in the body. Now, I didn't know he was in the church. I didn't know. But I knew that he was one of the few people in the family that was faithful. He was faithful to whatever he was doing. And I never forget uh, my silly self, you know, again, he didn't have nothing to show me. So at, so at 17, he came to me and I was on a bus stop. I know exactly where I was. I was on North Avenue and Harford Avenue and I was getting on the bus and he said, hey, girl, what's going on? I said, nothing going on. You know how you been or whatever. And mind you, I didn't I grew up with his younger brother. And so I really didn't know my cousin. But, you know, he was coming at me and, you know, like I said, I'm feisty. So I always got a word to back. I got a word to come back. So he said, hey, um, he said, girl, won't you come, um, come to worship with me? And I say, uh, what, you going to pick me up? So he said, no, nah, we're going to get on the bus. I said, man, I don't ride no cheese buses. I said, I don't want to ride no cheese bus to, the, to, uh, to worship. <laughs> so he said, he said, he said, ain't no cheese bus. The bus blue. I said, well, I, that's my favorite color, but I don't want to get on no blue bus. If I want to ride. So I said, if you can't give me a ride, I ain't, I ain't going to no worship. You know what I mean? So, so he was like, girl, you a trip. You so, and look, I got my little gold tooth, my mouth, and I'm being all slick, you know. And he said, girl, you something else. You know what I mean? But this, but I'm going to tell you something. This is what God did. Speed it up. So God said, you know what? You little slick thing. You think you know everything. I'm going to have to take you through a little something, something for you to get back to me. And that's what he did. And I said, and, and, and through my son, and I, and, I, and I say all the time, my son helped me to come to the Lord. Because like I said, it was one thing, you know, for me in my mind, oh, I can handle these streets. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be okay. My mother taught me everything I need to know to survive. So I'm good. But, you know, when you have a child and if you in tune to what's really going on, you got another life in your hands. You are that I know now you are a steward over another human being. And my thought was, ain't no way that I'm going to be able to do and give the best to this child. Not material things. My thing was emotionally, physically, and mentally. I want to give him the best. How am I going to give him the best? The only way. And like I tell people today, your best life is in Christ. You can't live your best life outside of Christ. It ain't happening. And so how do we do that? And I thought about that. And so like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm at Central. And, uh, and I'm there that first Sunday and I'm saying, uh, yeah, I, I like this. I like what I'm hearing because I'm getting book, chapter, and verse. And that's me. If you want to tell me something, you better give me book, chapter, and verse because I ain't trying to hear no tooth, tongue, lips. I don't want to hear that because I can do that myself. You know, I can talk a good game, whatever, whatever the subject is, I can talk it. And so I said, yeah, I said, oh, I like this. I like this. This thing will be constant learning. And, and that's me. I want to constantly learn and grow and progress, you know. Uh, and so I said, um, I got a couple questions. And so, uh, so I told my cousin, I said, I said, I got I said, I think I want to do this, but I got a couple questions. I got a couple questions, but let me tell you something though. Let me tell you something. Even before we got here, I went to a, uh, a congregation cause I was familiar, uh, you know, one of our religious neighbors, it was a Baptist, it was a Baptist, um, congregation. I went there prior to going to Central, about two weeks, two weeks prior to be going to Central. And I never forget, I had been going there maybe for about three weeks. And I noticed that everybody that went down that aisle, they told them they were saved. And I'm sitting here and I'm saying, nah, something's missing. I couldn't put my finger on it, but something was missing. So I gets in the room. I said, let me walk down this aisle, see what these people talking about. So I get in the room and they tell us, they say, yeah, uh, you know, y'all was saved when y'all walked down the aisle. My hand went up. I say, uh, 
sir, I say, um, I, I, would, I need to be baptized. I say, because I don't think, and it don't feel like, I don't know. I don't think I'm saved just walking down that aisle. Because if that were the case, I would have been walked down that aisle. And he said, well, I tell you what, sweetheart, you can be saved. You can be baptized. That's fine. That's a good thing to do. I said, yeah, that's what I need. That's what I need. So in the midst of all of that, I see my cousin while I'm waiting. Okay, y'all, I'm waiting on a baptism because you know they got a scheduled date. All right, they got a scheduled date. You get that letter. You know what I mean? You get the letter and you get all the list of stuff you got to bring to this baptism. And these people didn't know. In my mind, I'm saying, well, what if I was homeless? What if I had your socks, my head and neck and all of that? What if I didn't have that? And for me, baptism was essential. So I said, mm, this is strange. So I'm waiting around, you know, I'm waiting for that date. But like I said, in between time, here comes my cousin. I see him again. Yes, I'm excited now because I'm like, boy, look, I'm ready. I'm ready to get up in there. I don't care if I got to catch the bus. But here's what God did. God had blessed me. I had my own apartment. I had a car. So my cousin say, yeah, all right. I said, look, I said, that place, that, that place you go on Sundays, I want to go. So he said, um, all right, that's good. He said, I I'll come get you. I said, mm -mm, I can't miss. I'll pick you up. I'm driving now. He said, oh, go ahead, girl. So I said, oh, I'm going to pick you up because I don't want to miss and I don't want to be late. So I picked, I picked him up and me, him, his girls went over Central. And like I said, speed it up. And, and, and I had a couple questions and I don't remember what that was, but I, I never forget. It was something about Peter. I had a question about Peter, probably because he was feisty and fiery like me. So I had a question about Peter and brother Ville, brother Austin Ville. He took me downstairs and we, we talked and we, and, and, and he answered that question. And then he say, well, you ready? I said, yeah, cause ain't nothing else holding me back. You answered my question. I'm ready to go. So, so I'll obey the gospel. And I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, like I said, who thought and who told me it was going to be easy? I didn't think it was going to be easy. But again, like I said, even in baptism, I thought, OK, let me just do this. So, you know, so he can understand what I'm doing or whatever. And I still didn't know. I didn't know, you know, but 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 at every stage in my Christian life, I can truly say God centered me with a sister to come through at every stage. It was like, it was like kids growing up. Every age and stage, it was a sister there. You know, I had Sister Janet Good. She discipled me for a year and a half. Right after Sister Janet Good, I got picked up with by Sister Christine Earn. We went out door knocking and 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 did working with the bus ministry. Right after Sister um Sister Aaron, we go to Friday night classes with at the time who was Sister Lawrence. She's now Sister Candy Carr. We go to Friday night classes, so we get the bonding and and it, I was just sucking it up and sucking it up, you know, and I was just like, man. This thing is powerful. I'm telling you, I, I, even to this day, you know, when, 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 when we talked about uh, in Bible study today, just, just, just having that fellowship, the, 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 the indwelling and, and learning and growing in Christ still gets me fired up because it ain't easy. And I didn't grow up in a household that made me think that. And that's the thing that I appreciate about my mother. Now, my mother was like a, I'm telling you, she was like a, 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 a military drill sergeant. <laughs> she was like, I'm telling you, every moment was a teachable moment. And I'm the oldest. And sometimes I'm looking at her saying, I didn't ask you nothing about that. Why are you teaching me about that? You know, I'm 10 years old. And she telling me, well, this is how you, this is how you can get pregnant, make a baby. And I'm saying, well, I ain't thinking about that. And she say, but I want you to know. I want you to know exactly how it can happen, okay? When you get your little period, this would happen, and you, you know, you sex and all of that, you know. And so I'm like, man, this woman telling me all of this stuff. I don't want to know about this stuff. I ask you about something else, you know. But she used every moment to teach us and to show us that, in essence, God is the way. God is the way, even though, even though I know truthfully, in order to live and breathe and really strive in Christ, you have to do as you see, not as people say. But I tell you, I respected my mother so much that I did 
for the most part, do what she said, do what she said. And that was one of the reasons when I had my son, I said, I got to go. I said, you know, because my mother then raised me and my, my, my sister and my cousin that I grew up with, and this ain't her job. You know what I mean? I said, this ain't her job. I got to get my own and do my own thing. And that's when I, like I said, I started searching for God because I knew deep down inside to live my best life. It was only going to be in Christ. That was the only way I could do it. And being easy wasn't, wasn't even a factor. Wasn't even a factor. Because my thing is, look, if, if, you, if you a hood baby or know anything about the hood, trust and believe. It ain't nothing easy about that. There's nothing easy about that. And whenever you seek to grow or you want to put things into practice, you got to work at it. Nothing, nothing comes easy that's worth having, nothing. And that includes your Christianity. Your Christianity is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you some friends. It's going to cost you a couple dollars. It's going to cost you your life. But it's that old life. It's that old woman that you drag around on your back. That's the one that's going to cost you. But guess what? You can afford to lose her. You didn't need her anyway. You can afford to lose her. And every time she peek her ugly head up, put her down, put her down, put her down. Like the song we sang in the day in worship, get thee behind me, old lady, because I ain't living you no more. I'm living me. <laughs> so, so what I want to encourage everybody is be not conformed. Don't be conformed. I come with one scripture and one scripture only. What well, two? Romans 12, one and two. Don't be conformed, be transformed because conforming never worked for anybody. If you look over your life and you look over times when you conform to the norms of this society, you fail. Every time you fail. But what I know is every time I allow God to transform me in the areas where I needed it, I was victorious. I was victorious every time, every time. And then, you know, and then too, uh, I was encouraged, not to say encouraged, but it really wasn't encouraged. I was demanded and commanded. You know that old adage, if everybody jump off the, uh, jump off the roof, you going to, I heard that all the time, but brother, don't, don't tell me about nobody else. If, if everybody dying or everybody going that way of the bad way, you going to. What you think you're going to get out of it? You think you're going to do, you think you're going to have a better result than them? It ain't happening. You're going to get the same result. And so with that in mind, you know, I kept saying, I'm good with not conforming. I don't have a problem with not conforming. My thing was, you got to show me this. Don't tell me. You got to show me what conforming looks like. And I'll say that like every stage, I had a sister that could show me how to transform how to work this out and how to work that out. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And again, if anybody told you it's easy, they lied. They lied because it ain't, it ain't. But I tell you what, it's victory. It's victorious. It's gratifying. It is, uh, when, 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 when you come together and you hear the word of God and you reading and you fellowshipping, it is a feeling of, uh, of satisfaction that you can't get nowhere else. I ain't never got that kind of satisfaction nowhere else. And that's what feeding the spirit is. That's what transforming is. And you can't get it nowhere else. You can only be transformed by the indwelling of the spirit. It's nowhere, it's no other way to do it. Now, great men have tried but they fail. They fail. They fail. A transformation can only happen in Christ. Now get this. You might conform. Uh, you might deform, but you ain't going to get no transforming without Christ. He's the only way. He's the only way. And again, I say nothing good and worth having comes easy. So if you're looking for an easy road, in Christ is not it, is not it. But if you're looking for a light, laborious road, that's where you want to be. You want to be in Christ because anything that God would have you to do 
is going to be 10 times easier than something he doesn't want you to do. Because guess what? We all know, I'm telling you right now, if you pass 15, you know that sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. And it's going to have you tighter than you want to be. Any kind of sin. And there's no big sin and little sin. I'm telling you anything that keeps you incarcerated in the mind or the body is going to hold you so tight that it's going to choke you. I remember feeling that way. I remember feeling, and, 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 and that's what takes me back to my son, George. I remember feeling uh, uh, almost paralyzed, you know, um, on Tuesdays, you know, Sister Good, she would say, you know, you, you coming out? And I say to myself, listen, woman, I done came out on Sunday now. Why I got to come out on Tuesday? So, so then I say, okay, okay, all right, let me, let me see what she's talking about. Let me go out to this Tuesday night class, see what she's talking about. And I tell you, I went out to Tuesday night class, and I tell you, I, I never stopped until I left Central Church of Christ. It was, it, it was a blessing, and it was beautiful. And then, okay, then she come back. Oh, what about Wednesday? I said, Lord, listen now. Now, I done told my sister about 15 years ago, she, my sister on my father's side, she was, uh, she was uh, married to a minister. And I remember her telling me, um, yeah, girl, we, um, you know, we, we, we in that place, you know, four days a week. I said, girl, you know what? I ain't never going to no church four days a week. I'm telling you, that is just too much. So hear me, I'm, I'm 25, 26. And I'm saying to myself, now this woman didn't ask me that she didn't got me in Sunday morning. She didn't got me in Sunday evening. Now she got me Tuesday. Why she asked me about Wednesday? Now this thing is this thing is getting too close to four times a week. I just said I ain't never doing that. So I say, now what is she doing? She trying to get me to go to church in my head. She trying to get me to go to church with people, these people four days a week. I done told my sister years ago I ain't doing that. That's too much. So so I finally get on Wednesday. And I said, oh my God. But I was missing. I was missing. I was missing. I'm telling you, my spirit was just getting fed and I was feeling all filled. And I was like, man, I can't stop. And to this day, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, when I miss, boy, it, it's, it's painful. I feel, I feel pain. I'm like, you know what I be doing? I be looking at the clock saying, okay, what time is it? All right, they out now. Good. Okay. I feel good. I don't feel guilty. I feel guilty because, because I know too much. You know what I mean? I feel like Jeremiah. When Jeremiah said, I don't want to preach no more. I don't want to talk to these people no more. They're getting on my nerves. I'm tired of talking, Lord. I don't want to do it. But guess what? He came back and he said, I know too much. I can't stop. It shut up in my bones and I know too much. I got to go. I got to talk. That's how I feel about it. When I miss, I feel pain. I feel like, ooh, something is, oh man, I, I think I need to hear that. I want to hear that. So imagine when I had my kids and I had to be off them 12 weeks and I said to myself, look, I could be off 12 weeks from that work. That's the thing that's killing me. I want to be in that workplace, but I want to come with the saints. Because I love it. It's always, it's filling, it's inspiring. And so easy, easy for real, it's a, it's a word that I seldom use. If I seldom use, because I'm going to tell you something. When I, when I think about something being easy, sometimes I think it's, 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 a, it's a conspiracy. Because I'm thinking, oh, no, see, that's too easy. It's something with that. That's too easy. That's too easy. Now. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. God's commandments. Daisy. Why? Because he gave us the Holy Spirit to deal with it, to work it out. Not only that, he gave you about 10,000 brothers and sisters in this world to help you through it. You can pick up the phone. You can get online. You can text whatever way you can do it to get through whatever you're going through. That's easy. That's about the easiest it's going to get. But as far as living this life and dealing with the trials, the tribulations, and the vicissitudes of this life, that's not easy. You know why? Because we just pilgrims going through. We don't belong here. We here to help others understand that we're trying to go somewhere better. We're trying to go somewhere that we can't even imagine. We can read about it, but can we really imagine what heaven is going to be like? Mm -mm. We can't. We really can't. It's beyond our understanding. That's about the easiest 
it's going to get for you. You're going to be in this life and you're going to suffer the same things that everybody else suffer. But guess what? Remember this. You got about 10,000 brothers and sisters in this world that you can, that can help you deal with it. I feel like, uh, uh, what, what, what is Clint Eastwood? He say, uh, he say, he say, I'm just a pilgrim. And that's exactly what we are. We're just pilgrims traveling through. And we ought to, we, 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 we ought to embrace that. We ought to embrace that. You know, we, we don't, don't, don't feel, and I tell my kids all the time, we have our challenges, you know, me and your dad, we have our challenges uh, with each other, outside of our family, uh, at work and in different places. And sometimes they might think that we don't because maybe we make it look easy. And like I said, in Christ, it is to an extent, not to the extent that it's not going to happen. And I think sometimes that's where we might misunderstand it. That easy means I don't get that. Mm -mm. No, easy means when I get it, I got somebody to help me through it. That's what easy is. Easy is not, I'm not going to face that. I'm not going to face this. No, 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 no. You're going to face death. You're going to face uh, family situations. You're going to face, uh, one of the things I said, you're going to contend with family, with friends, with, with whomever. You know, I tell you, we, we used to have uh, First Steps of Faith class. Uh, Brother Whitfield and I was in that same class, Brother Miles, First Steps of Faith. And, and, and me and some sisters, we would, we would reason together out of the scriptures. And it's, and it's amazing because about five years ago, I saw this sister and she said to me, girl, I remember we used to reason, reason together out them scriptures because, you know, we didn't understand sometimes. And Brother Miles would encourage that. He would say, listen, I want y'all to do your homework together here and during the week, call each other, work it out, talk it out. So when y'all get in here Sunday, we can all talk about it together. And that's, that's easy. That's the easy you're going to get. The easy you're going to get is sharing and, 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 and bearing these burdens together. And, that, and that's, that, that's, about, that's about the easiest you're going to get. But I tell you, like I said, I needed to find the Lord because the Lord was the only way for me to build a life that I dreamed of for me and my family. I wanted me and my family to worship the Lord. I wanted us to be together and I try every day. I fight hard because I know at the end of the day, obedience is better than sacrifice. And that's what I try to do. That's what I try to do, ladies. I really do. I don't look for easy. I just look to stand strong and get through it, whatever it is, whatever it is. And I tell you, outside of God, I thank my little old mother who's 4'11", about 100 pounds, wet. <laughs> <laughs> she was a beautiful person, uh, is, she's a beautiful person, and um, you call her name out in prayer, because we're still working on her, we're still working right. on her, her little feisty self passed that on to me, and, um, and, and she, she, you know, she taught us, she taught us so much, and, right. and to this day, I wouldn't be disciplined, uh, I wouldn't understand time management. You learn them through chores. You learn time management because we had a time. If you ain't have right. done by, by noon, you couldn't go out. And I love the great outdoors. So I had to get it done. But it sounds like uh, the kids say, girl, your time is winding. Your time is winding. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she just looking like it in her face. But um, I appreciate it. <laughs> she, she she looking like I ain't no sister feel can talk that much. But no, nah. <laughs> but I appreciate it. I love it. I love it because uh, once 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 I get you know all filled up and the things start coming back, it's like yesterday. It's like yesterday. My son used to say, "Ma, I want to go to my class," and I'd look at him and say, "Boy, I'm so tired. I don't feel like going over there. I don't feel like driving." But I tell you one thing. I remembered how I wanted our life to be. And I get up and I go. I go mm -hmm. Tuesdays and I go Wednesdays and whatever day we could be there, I would go. Mm -hmm. and, and for that, I'm grateful. I'm grateful mm -hmm. to have had um, a son that God used to work through me. Because again, mm -hmm. my thought was still, girl, you done. You know, you didn't commit that abomination. That boy is the only one that can really be saved. Okay, he's real. He's the only one. But uh, two years into um, serving the Lord, it ding ding in my head, ding ding, girl, you can do this too. Right. You can live this life too. Mm -hmm. I said that all of your sins were washed away. Mm -hmm. I ain't worrying about that no more. So you need to stop worrying about it 
and live your best life because you're in Christ now. And that's exactly what I did. I took up, I took up my bootstraps and I said, oh, I'm on it, Lord. I'm on it. I'm ready. I'm ready. And so that's, that's, that's my story. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll say briefly that uh, I met Brother Whitfield and um, our first steps of faith class. And we used to study together over the phone and that kind of thing. And we, you know, we, we grew together in the Lord and that kind of thing or whatever. And I tell you, um, I don't look back. I don't look back right. because every day is a new challenge. Uh, but God is good and God is faithful. And he said, my grace is sufficient and I'm be strong in your weakness. So don't fret. Don't fret. Because at the end of the day, I'm looking to go to heaven. I don't know when my last day is. I'm not sure if you know. I doubt it. But know, if you think know. you know, <laughs> if you think you know, think again. I don't know what my last day is. So so I strive. And like I said before, when I don't get it right, I got to go back and make my apologies. Because God will let me know. He lets you know when you need to make your apologies because you messed up and said something foolish or did something mm-hmm. foolish to somebody. And so go ahead and fix that thing. Because mm-hmm. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. So uh, with that being said, I appreciate it. Uh, listen, I was nervous like crazy. Today. Yeah, okay. yeah look, today. When they got to talk. And that's why I say it's, oh. it's always a blessing if we are always coming and always conversating because yeah. these kind of conversations are necessary. I know when people think of like, oh, it's about to be another Bible study or oh, it's about to be another you know, but it's, it's a conversation of yeah. how we can improve and how can we grow That's and right. anything that we do, we put into practice. That's right. Right. That's right. But when it comes yeah. to our spiritual life, we don't think that we have to do anything other than just be baptized. Yeah. And that's the part where we talked about baptism last month yeah. and then after baptism, what? You know, you said you had a soul that your soul was like crying out for, you know, something else. When That's those right. things happen, when people was telling you different things, you like that don't sound right. Uh, and to have an honest heart is, a, is absolutely a gift from God, because a lot of us aren't being honest. We know yeah. that we lost. We know that we in we're not in the right place. That's right. And we don't want to say anything because we don't want to upset the norm we don't want to upset our mother because we've been going to this church with our mother since we was two yeah. but what's going on in there is not helping your soul is not That's getting right. you where you need to be with christ you're yeah. building a relationship more on your mother than building a relationship on your creator and your creator That's is right. like that all is going to cease and stop i'm the That's one right. that supplies all your needs i'm yeah. the one that's giving you this mother to be here for x amount of times to do x amount of z and we then don't look at it like that we only look at it like after she leaves and passes like oh thank god for my mother you know she they put her here for this amount of time but you also have to think about like what did my mother really give me yeah. you know we always think yeah. about that um earthly inheritance mm-hmm. versus thinking about that spiritual inheritance and i say my mother probably gave my mother did give me the best gift in the world she did bring me to the church of christ because i well my godmother was a holiness and we used to go to her um well i used to go to her church on sundays and i was with her most of the time because she was babysitting for my mom and i was in her church and they was shouting and screaming and doing all kinds of stuff and i always i'm like "Eh, this is a good time this is a good time but i can't remember what was being said i can't remember a sermon i remember the tambourines i remember the drums i remember all of that i even remember the lady that scared the crap out of my sister because we were sitting next to her in service and then next thing you know she just jumps up and starts screaming and running around the running around the building my sister got so scared she's like i don't want to go there no more like i mean freaked my sister out okay so you know that's the thing i remember i don't remember a sermon i don't remember a word but you know even though most of my family isn't a part of the body of christ if they have gone one time and then they come back later on they be like dad y'all still singing this song 
Like y'all was singing that song in Central. Now y'all singing that song in the city. And I heard that song at East Baltimore. Like we we all in one accord with this song singing. <laughs> And we, you is going to get the same thing here. And it comes with the word of God too. Like understanding that we are East Baltimore Church of Christ. We are inner city Church of Christ. We might be Central Church of Christ, but you getting the same scripture. You getting the same God from that one, that one, and that one. And that's what God requires of us. He requires that unification in his word where you're not going to hear different things. We all on the one accord, but even down to our song book, we got some different songs in the supplication book, but in this one little burgundy book right here, we, we all singing these songs together. And I just, I mean, I just want to put out there to everybody that once you come out of, I want you to come out the water. It's the same thing as once you come out of high school, or once you come out of college and all these other things, what do you plan on doing with the which, which you just got? The information doesn't become knowledge until you apply it, right? So what are you doing with it once you get it? If you go to school for hair, you should be evolving. Like the same the hairstyles have changed. They've come back out and they've changed again. And that requires schooling. It's like a continuation of education. They have classes in college that says continuation of education classes. That is the same way you should think about your spiritual life. There is a continuation of education constantly going throughout your biblical life, like th throughout your journey. And if you are going to just sit here and this is the this is the part where I said, you know, I tell people anytime you kind of in the city, you about to get to work, okay? You about to get to work because I don't want you just sitting here. What Brother Lork may bring, it may not be something that you actually need that day. In the morning times, before I go to worship, I say, what am I looking for? Why am I coming? And what can I give back? So I, I would say that is a good idea that anytime you go to any Bible class, any Bible study, any form of worship, you ask some questions that's pertinent to your life. So that way, if those things aren't answered and you need, and you got some questions, like Sister Winfield said, she got questions. I, I was asking questions. You should be asking questions. It's a part of your spiritual growth. You can't just sit there and let the preacher be preaching to you and you just like, I get it. Do you get it? Did you get it? If there was a point that he made that you didn't get, it is your job to let him know that you didn't get it. It is, he is not the savior, okay? He is not the savior. He can't hone in on who didn't get it. He ain't like, he just, he just preaching. He's preaching. He, he ain't, I mean, he can look at our face and sometimes they'll be like, oh, I see some of y'all went over y'all heads. Like, <laughs> but he can't individually pick out after service, like, dang, who, who head did it go over? Let me, let me see if I can remember who head it went over. <laughs> like, no, you have to be like, bro, when you said this, this, and this, I didn't get it. I don't even understand what you're talking about. I don't, I don't get that at all. It's your job. You know, when you're in school, I tell my kids all the time, if you did not understand what the teacher was giving you, it is your job to go to the teacher and, and ask her to break it down for you a little bit more in simpler text. And then once he breaks it down in simpler text, study it some more. That's the part that's not easy, you know, because we want to just, we want things to come by osmosis sometimes, like, oh, but our relationship should be easy. You know, you get married. I ain't been married, but we think that our relationships sh should be easy. When you get married, you think you're my, oh man, my husband going to be this and we're going to be that. We're going to wear matching shirts. We're going to wear matching, like <laughs> we're going to have these kids and they're going to be the best kids ever. It ain't easy. Y'all got to talk to each other. Y'all got to have conversations with each other. Y'all have to break things down. Y'all in this ring together. And that's how you should look at your spiritual life. You are now in a ring 
with your brothers and sisters, and they are here to strengthen you, to help you, to build a relationship with you, to get to heaven. Like we are on this journey together. We have our own separate um, way we might do things because how I might do it might be not how Sister Winfield do it, how Sister Lord do it. I'm not trying to make little clones or doppelgangers of myself. I'm literally trying to say, what gift do you have that can help in this work? Because I can tell people, I can tell people now, I don't like working with kids. I got them. I don't like working with them. That is not my strength. Now, if I needed to do it, I'll do it. I'll do it. But I'm not going to go to that first. <laughs> like, can you, can you put me with the old people? Uh, can I can I get with the older sisters? I'll be with them. I don't believe I'm gonna put me with these kids, but I'm gonna do it. Like whatever you need, like sure, sure, I'll do it. Okay, you know. And then, cause we will do it anywhere else. If we think about the things that we do in our lives, you know, at work, they be like, oh, can you do this extra project? You like, I don't want to do the extra project. But you like, you know what? Let me do the extra project. The project might help you grow in the position that you are to get you to another position. And that's how I feel, you know, our church, our life in Christ. Now, my thing is, I am a Christian. Yes, that means I'm a part of the body. Yes. But it's a way of living versus a title. You know, like I'm not Dr. Christian. I'm not, you know, PhD in Christianity and stuff like that. It's a way of living. Because most people be like, well, you're a Baptist, you're a Christian. Nope. You're a Presbyterian, you're a Christian. Nope. It is literally a way of life. And you have to ask yourself, is the way that I am living going according to what Christ would have me to do? So I'm going to give you, what is it, uh, 2 Timothy 3, because the problem is um, we think that things look spiritual when they're not, because it sounds good. It looks good. My mother was a praying mother, so I know she, I know this about her. My mother was this, and my grandfather was that. He was reverend, doctor, and everything, and you just be like, that's nice. But what does the book say about your father and your grandmother and your mother? Because that's that's the standard. We have our own standard, but let's go to God's standard because that's that's where we want to be. If you're trying to, and I try to make it as simple as possible, right? And we women on here, there might be some men that might be watching later on, but we women on here. Once we find something that we like and we're interested in, let's say it's a guy. We're interested in this guy. We find out what that guy like. We find out what that guy looks for and, and looks into things. We want to know, does he like this or does he like that? And sometimes we'll be like, you know what? That's not a bad way to be. If I know this man likes to cook, maybe I should learn how to cook if you don't. You know, if I know that he likes bright clothing to probably get him to notice me, I need to start wearing all this black because he likes bright clothing. We do not do that with Christ. We feel like the book says, come as you are. That is a standard of you're not going to be better without me. So come as you are. You're not better without me come as you are. Yes. Come with your raggedy sinful self. That's what that means. It doesn't mean stay raggedy and sinful. So once you come raggedy and sinful, you get baptized and you get in, you get the knowledge, you get the learning, you apply what you have learned. You do those things that would please God. Just like you would do those things to you, to your, 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 to please those other people around you. We are people pleasing people. As many times we try to say, I ain't worried about nobody but myself. There's somebody we worried about. There's somebody that we kind of want to look better in front of. I know for me, when I go out, yes, I want to look my best, okay? 
because I'm single and I want to look my best. Now, when I get married, I want to look my best for my husband. I'm going to look good for him because there's somebody out here trying to look better than me for him. And I'll drag her, even in church. Like, <laughs> I'm a drag in the Lord's side. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just saying, we really have to apply those things that we do. I want to please the Lord. I want to know what that looks like. How do I know what that looks like if I don't go to him for the standard, right? So in 2 Timothy, uh, let me see. Y'all, this is what my notes look like. You see them? They all written down on a piece of paper that's all over the place. I ain't, I ain't organized. It's so funny. Uh, let's see. I need to be better at this. Second Timothy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And I just had it. Let me find it because it's real. It's real. Second Timothy 3 and 5. So 2 Timothy 3 and 5, it says, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. And we can just go up. So we're going we're gonna, to, 2 Timothy 3, 1, it says, but mark this. That means write it down, okay? Write it down. There will be terrible times in the last days People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying his power, have nothing to do with such people. You can go down that line, that scripture, and you can find yourself in there. You can find your cousins in there. You can find, you know, your, your uncle, your grandpa, whoever. You can find all these things because everybody has a form of godliness. People give you themselves like they give scripture. Like um, when people say, um, cleanliness is next to godliness and you will hold on to that. You will think that a person that has trash on their floor in their house is ungodly because your grandmother kept her house spick in Spain, you'll be like, she was godly because cleanliness is next to godliness. And you're like, that ain't in the book. That ain't in the book. Like, maybe your grandmother's house was clean because she was always home. Whereas this sister who is at church in her classes, she like, man, that piece of paper on the floor, I got to go to class. I ain't got time for that. I'll come get it, you know, at another time. You know, I tell my kids all the time, look, if you see it, pick it up. I don't care who put it there, pick it up. Let's and let's go. Let's keep it moving. You know, proud, lovers of money, not listening to their parents. This is the time that we have always been in because this book was written so long ago. And he's like, it's here. It's coming from within, you know. And it's so sad that we're looking for it to come from without, right? We're thinking that the hard time is going to come from without. But honestly, it's coming from within. And it's coming from within our own selves. Honestly, our body is worn against our spirit. It don't want to be godly. It's like, I don't, I don't care. Like, you, you see what you, like, like, we ain't got time. Like, but you have time for everything else. We literally find time for everything else if we want to be at a club and the club the club is open monday through friday and they playing good music we will make sure that we're at that club monday through friday having ourselves a good old time but i thought you ain't had no time we make time for what we want to make time for people be like you can't be in church all the time well technically i am in church all the time because i am the church i am in this body and i have sacrificed this body to christ i am in it all the time so the church is with me wherever i go now when i get amongst my other 
you know, church members, I am amplified. Like Sister, Sister Whitfield said, I'm excited. And thank God to the time that we're living in now, because when, when you miss the Tuesday class, you miss the Tuesday class. You could get some snippets of it because somebody might share it with you, but you're not actually getting the whole thing. You're just getting a little bit. And you're like, is that all she said? Girl, that's all I can remember. That's all I can remember. You should have been there. Now we're in a time where, at, we, and I tell my kids all the time, I say, you know, when I wanted to find out what something was, I had to get the encyclopedia. All y'all got to do is, hey, Siri, what's 10 plus five? Y'all don't even want to do that. Like, y'all don't want to do that. Like, you can literally go on anything. And t- let me tell you something. I typed in, let, let me, Google, right? Because I didn't remember the scripture. I said, scriptures, they look, scripture, they have a look of spirituality. And it pulled up the scripture that I wanted. Talk about easy we are literally living in a time where we can fill ourselves with the spirit. We are, we in a best time. We in a best time because our studying can be done like this on zoom where we ain't really got to leave out our houses. We look, you see my background. I'm in my room. I'm in my room. Okay. (laughs) And we could be with each other this way. You ain't had that before. You had to leave out your house. We kind of made it easy for you. Now you can just be on Zoom and talk to us and have a conversation. You can be on Facebook. I'm like, we are living in a time where we could be full throttle for the kingdom, really moving in the kingdom. And we are right now, we are stagnant. It's, it's, It's so amazing to me how stagnant we are. The church was growing 3,000, 2,000 years ago by word of mouth, by going from town to town. And and right now, in the the age that we are in, our congregations are stagnant. The growth is sporadic. We might get one baptism, and we hope that with that one baptism, that there's something that we can cultivate, and the Lord will help us to bring that out of them, and just, you know, sort of germinate and grow. But we we afraid to share the gospel because we don't want to alienate nobody. Well, you know, that's just my opinion. I'm not going, it's not your opinion, it's scripture. Not your opinion. It's literally the word of God. Share it. Somebody shared it with you. The, the part where I feel like we might get messed up is that we feel like we can't share because of the things that we have gone through and like well I'm I'm embarrassed I'm ashamed you know since Whitfield she said you know she was a single mother I'm a single mother I'm a single mother I've, I'm, I've never been married so do you know what that means I was out here living my best worst life so you know I can't be ashamed to share that I can't you know because there will come a time where people will look at you and be like, oh, you seem like you got everything going, everything put together. No, I'm not. Like, girl, I'm struggling just like you. <laughs> I'm like, I got, I got issues. You know, not issues, issues. Like, <laughs> them things cause me problems. And who do I go to about those problems? Do I go to those people who I want to get a false sense of godliness from or do I go to the source and to the book and am I really trying to understand what God would have me do really so I would say you know who told you that this Christian walk was going to be easy who told you that when you got out of that water that all you had to do was just continuously call on the name of Jesus and you'll be fine that's not in the book. If you got to wait to be baptized third Sunday on the second Sunday on the first month of the full moon and all of that stuff like that, that ain't in the book. Because in the book it says they baptize daily. Such as should be saved. So if you call us on Tuesday and tell what you want to be baptized, we're going to come get you on a Tuesday and baptize you. 
period. Like we coming to get you, you know, you have to, and if you don't study, you won't even know, like you won't even know. And the old Testament was written to the Jews and it was prophecy, and it was talking about the coming of Christ, and then if you go to the New Testament, where you're talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they are literally talking about the genealogy of Jesus, and how he came, and then Jesus' ministry, but once you hit Acts, after that, he, they are talking to the church. All those letters, they're not talking to the people outside of the body, they are literally talking to the body, because we are the problem. They're like, if the church is stagnant, it's not because God isn't still saving. It's not because Jesus' blood has run out. <laughs> it's because we literally have stopped doing our part. If we, if we continue with 20 members, it's not because God doesn't want us to have more members. It's because we stopped teaching. It's because we stopped doing those things that we need to do as Christians to build up the church we're not sharing anymore we're not we're not growing our own selves like when people be like pray for my spiritual growth i'd be like well, what are you doing what are you doing like what, what what specifically would you want me to pray for for your spiritual growth is it that you need more study material because like uh sister whitfield said it's gonna cost you something study material i'm gonna tell y'all now so study material I got books, right? I, I pay for these with my own money. And I literally, like, I can't be like, Brother Lord, and I could, because Brother Lord cool like that. I could be like, Brother Lord, there's a book that I want. Um, the Church of Christ got a discount because I don't want to pay the $24.99. Is y'all got a discount? Brother Lord might be like, girl, I'll pay the $24.99. I mean, I don't think, thank you. <laughs> That's the book I want, <laughs> you know? And, you know, there's study material, like, um, 21st century Christian, you know, we think that the only tools we have, and it's a good tool, is the Bible. That's, that's where you start. But there's other things that will help you break down the Bible, help you break down those little, those big words into little words, help you to get into context about what the scripture is actually talking about versus what you might conform in your own head. You know, scriptures does say study to so show yourself approved. You got to work out your own salvation. You can't expect a soul stirring lesson to come out the pulpit every Sunday because guess what? The pulpit is actually to grow the congregation for people to come in that aren't saved. That is like he's teaching things that's like, you know what, why you should be saved. If you're already saved, you know why you should be saved. So you're sitting there like, why are we, why are we going off of why we should we be saved again? Because there's people in the building that's not saved. If you feel like you need a deeper study, you need to go and get that study. You need to go and find a sister that will study with you. Like Sister Whitfield said, at every part of her growing, there was somebody there to help her in that and sister mac was there for me i'm gonna say that was my when i was like in my 14 when i was 14 and 15 i was going through a lot as a teenager i couldn't talk to my actual mother who was my sister in christ i didn't know how to i, could, I, did, I was like i can't connect with her we're not talking you know, I'm not talking to her right now. And to have a good sister to tell me, for one, you're going to respect your mother. That's one. That's your sister in Christ and it's your mother. So you're going to respect her. And I was like, okay. And then to give me God to say, I know this is how you're feeling, but this is what the Lord would have you to do. He would have you to love your mother. He would have you to forgive your mother because he's working with her as well. And that helped me in my life like it helped you know everybody on this earth needs somebody and the church we need each other to grow to become better to do the things like if god felt like we didn't need anybody he wouldn't have gave adam eve like he wouldn't have gave adam eve and 
he gave Mo he gave Aaron to Moses. Like Moses, like I got a stuttering problem. I don't think I should, you know, be out here teaching you. He like take Aaron with you because he's a better. You know, he had twelve disciples and all these apostles and all these people to help. God doesn't even say to himself. He has the Trinity. They work together. God is teaching us unity. He is showing us unity. And we always try to be like, no, I don't need nobody. The reason why it's going, the reason why it feels the way it feels is because we are fighting against unity. We have been taught to take it on ourselves. We have been taught to, you know, you shouldn't, the, everything that stays in the house, everything that happens in the house, you need to stay in the house and you shouldn't tell nobody your business and, you know, God helps him who helps himself. That ain't in the book. That's that's actually against the book, okay? That is against God. They're saying God helps those who help themselves. It's not in the book because God says, I help those who call on me, who rely on me. Why would I help somebody who gonna help themselves? Like that makes no sense. If you're in a ditch, if you think you can get out that ditch by yourself, have at it. I'm calling out, hey, who's up there? Reach down, help me out this ditch. Call on the Lord and see if he's gonna send somebody to get you out that ditch. Now, if you're gonna try to figure out how to get out the ditch by yourself. We're gonna find you in the ditch later and you ain't gonna be <laughs> you ain't gonna be the person you was when you went in there. You know, there is we are supposed to be unified. Unified. I need my sisters in Christ. I need Sister Chanel. I need Sister Lord. I need Sister Kayla Whitfield. I need Sister Monique. I need everybody on this line. I need the people that's on Facebook. Accountability, one, and to help edify, to help grow, to help me grow spiritually. There's some stuff that Sister Wilfield has gone through and done that I haven't done. Like she's been through fishes of men. I ain't, I ain't even try to crack open fishes of men. That thing is thick, okay? That thing is thick. But if there's somebody who's wanting to go through, and which is an awesome tool, because my mother went through fishes of men, she finished it. I looked at it, it was like, that ain't for me. <laughs> But there will be a time in my life where I might be like, you know what? I should try Fishes of Men. And then I'll have my sister there to help me go through Fishes of Men. There's a book out there that's a wonderful tool called Muscle and Shovel. I have not gone through Muscle and Shovel. I heard that's another one. <laughs> and I'm like, there's some sisters who have gone through that. That is another growing tool, a spiritual growth tool that will help you in your Christian walk. It is not easy, but it's worth it. That's what I want everybody to understand, that this life isn't easy, but it is worth it. To ask those questions that you are, that's in your heart, that's in your spirit, it's worth asking those questions. Sister Whitfield asked those questions and she got where God would have her to be. If she would have kept quiet, Never said anything. She might be in somebody Baptist church right now with a tambourine, clapping it up. <laughs> and that's and that's just what it is. Having a party good time on her way to damnation. Cause that's that's what we doing. Like we where are we going? That is another question you need to ask yourself spiritually. Where am I going? Where do I want to go? Because this life. It's, it's fleeting, y'all. I'm, I'm going to be 39 this year, okay? <laughs> and I was like, when did that happen? When did it happen? I don't remember it. I don't feel like I've lived 39 years. I feel like I, I, I haven't. Because for the most of that time, I was fighting against what the Lord would have me to do. So I haven't been living my best life like that abundant life that Christ was talking about, I haven't been living it. And now that I'm striving, that I'm trying, I feel like the time is going by too fast. I'm like, I don't have enough time to do. I don't have enough time to go to all the classes I want to go to. I don't have enough time 
to have those conversations that I want to have. Look, we run out of time now. It's almost four o'clock. We're supposed to be off ahead of at 3.30, right? <laughs> you know, it's just not enough time, you know? But I just, I want us to understand that it's important to know why you do what you do in Christ. Don't be ritualistic about it. Don't be like, because it's Sunday, I'm going to church. Don't do that. That's, that's not doing yourself a service at all. Because you're going to miss out on so much stuff if you're just doing it because, hey, it's a Sunday. It ain't nothing else to do from 11 to 12. The best football game don't come until 2.30. So I might as well do this. You are doing yourself a disservice. I mean... Tuesday night Bible class, Wednesday night Bible class. Now, Brother Whitfield has a, a Thursday Bible class, and that's for everybody, believers and non-believers. Friday with Sister Ty, Monday with Sister Dow. Saturday, go hang out with some other saints and, and have conversations that you may not be comfortable having conversations with at, on Wednesday and Tuesday. You know, create your own study with some people, you know. You can do that. You have the freedom in Christ that if on Sundays you don't get the questions answered that you need to ask, there is still other days out the week that you can start that up. Like, you know what? This is all the list of questions that I, I need answered and y'all need to bring y'all questions to you and we're going we to work this out together. Everything that Sister Whitfield was talking about, she was talking about working out with someone. Her cousin, Brother Hughley, who I know, that's my homie, like, you know, worked it out with him to get her at the at the point where she knew that she needed to be baptized and the church that she was in was the right one. Then those sisters, Sister Good, I know Sister Good, I grew up with her daughter. Everybody that she spoke about, I can say, yes, you are absolutely right. There are sisters in the body of Christ that has such good rapport and reputation that as soon as you hear their name, you like, oh yeah, I like her. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Sister Naomi from East Baltimore, Sister Craig from East Baltimore, Sister Brooke from East Baltimore. I, I can tell you some sisters, if you're not on this side of town, I can give you some sisters. Who, who you want? Sister Worley at Sandtown Church of Christ? If you if you need some, if you need, let me name a few, you know, there's other sisters in Washington, D.C. Where you at? I can point you to those sisters and that's what we do. That unification is so strong in Christ that wherever you at, I can point you to a sister in that city that can help you grow if you really want to grow. You're moving? Where are you moving to? There's a, it was a, there's an app for that. There's a sister for that. Like, I got you. I got you. And that's, that's, that's basically when I come on here, that's what I'm talking about. I want us to grow together. I don't want to grow by myself. I want to grow with you. You know, it's, it's so much better when it's together. You know, two incomes is always better than one, right? <laughs> That's what I want y'all to look at when you think about the church. Two souls are better than one. When that Holy Spirit pulls down on all of us, when, when we all in the room together, because all of us have that little indwelling, we talk about that day of service, that indwelling, all of us get a measure of it. But when it come together, whew, it feels so inspiring. It, it will. People are like, oh, y'all just on something. Yeah, yeah. Because I just got something that helped me. It's going to help me love my kids better. It's going to help me be a better person at my job. It's going to help me not feel a certain type of way when people do things to me. It's going to help me give, you know, and give of myself out beyond the specs of what I thought I was going to be able to do. And you and, and all of us have a testimony about it where we have come out of ourselves, where we didn't think that we could actually extend ourselves that way. And that's what Sister to Sister is here for. I want you to extend yourselves. So when you come on on Sundays, every, you know, every second Sunday, extend yourself, become a part of the conversation. You are allowed to have a voice here. 
whatever you're thinking about, put in the comments. And I got comments to read, y'all. It says, um, Sister Chanel with us said, whatever you think, Google it. Siri and YouTube can find it. And that's true. Um, Sister Lorg said, I was married and still sinning. One does not ne negate the other, just a different kind of sin. And um, Sister Kayla Whitfield said, the Christian walk is not easy, but with effort, with effort and constant prayer, study, and practice, that's what makes us strong. We are God's chosen people. Um, Sister Lorg said, LOL is context, context, context. You are getting me excited. Um, Sister Whitfield said, bring the crane to get you out of the ditch. Exactly. Like, we need, we need this. Like, it's so important, y'all. Like, I can't stress it out enough, you know. And I would say God has all given us a unique talent of some sort. And are you using it? Ask yourself those questions. I'm, I'm a question asking person. Since Winfrey said she asks questions, I be asking questions too. Sometimes they be like, I wish she wouldn't ask that question. I'm going to ask it. I'm going to ruffle a little feather because I'm going to ask the question, <laughs> you know. And it's a good thing. You got to ask questions. You got to know what you're doing it for. Always have a purpose of what you do. God has given us all talents and he don't like when we don't use them. He already said it. You know, if this fig tree is not bearing fruit, I'm going to cut it off. You don't want to be cut off. You don't want to be here for nothing. Like, I ain't sitting here on a Sunday, on a Tuesday or Wednesday, just for God to be like, girl, get on out of here. I, don't, I never knew you. Go ahead. <laughs> Go on. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> I'm like, no. And I don't want that for nobody else that I know like that be gone from me? Like, are, are we really thinking about our spirituality? We think that's like not going to happen. Like God, God ain't going to dismiss me. He bought a whole flood on some people. Like you better know it. <laughs> he a man about his word. He a God about his word. I just, and I want us to be about our word too. We made a commitment to Christ when we got baptized. And I'm not talking to people that ain't baptized, okay? Because you didn't make the commitment. So I'm not talking to you. Get in Christ and then I'll be sitting here telling you that you made a commitment to Christ, okay? I want y'all to come in though. If y'all not baptized, I want y'all to come into the full because like I said, I can't do it without you. There's a gift and the talent that you have that is can be utilized, that will be utilized, especially if you come to inner city. We will use it <laughs> to help grow the borders of the kingdom. You ain't coming here to sit out, okay? We want you to grow. We want you to ask those questions. We want you to be spiritual. We want you to know that God loves you and cares for you, okay? You are here with a purpose and for a reason. You're important. You know, why do we... We get more affirmation. We get more like, oh, I got this affirmation wall. And it's a whole bunch of quotes from people that are dead and gone. But from the living God, you don't, you don't take that. You take quotes, and I, and I ain't saying that they're not great quotes. You take something from Dr. Martin Luther King, had a dream, he's dead. He's still dead. You know, Rosa Parks and, you know, Harriet Tudman and, you know, Arthur B. Wells, all these people that are dead and gone and ain't think about you. But the living God who created you, who gave you a purpose, who gave you a life, you do not take his word seriously. Like, just ponder on that a little bit. Just take that with you every day. I'm not saying don't do words of affirmation. That's a good thing. You should be wanting to build and grow and everything else like that. But it does not supersede God's word and what God says about you and how wonderfully beautiful you're made. Do you really need, um, that's my girl too. Um, uh, God, she was in my head. The one that has that nice smoky voice. Uh, Don Adams. No, the one who says, um, I know why the cage bird sings that. Uh, oh, Maya Angelou. Yes, Maya Angelou. Like, that's right. See the unity, Maya Angelou. I can't get a name on my mouth. We will take yes. everything that Sister Maya says 
the forgotten penny. Mm. You know, look at that. Just coming. <laughs> it's flowing. Yes, yes. Like these are great people, but it does not supersede the word of God. So why don't we, well, all, all day, all night, people will be like, it's just a book. Man wrote this book, but every affirmation you have, every financial little tidbit that you have, um, how to grow your hair, how to make your eyelashes this and to look better this and everything, they all came from man. So why not listen to your creator who, who literally is not, what says holy men, not just any man, exactly. Given, you know, great talents by God himself. <sighs> that deep sigh, it's like, oh my gosh, it's so real. It's so real. You know, if anybody got anything, please chime in. Like I'm, you know, I want y'all to be a part of the conversation. I see y'all on Facebook and everything like that. I absolutely want y'all to be a part of the conversation because it's real. And I don't know how we're going to grow without each other. It's just not going to happen. And, you know, I would definitely say that there's more study that needs to be done on my part. Absolutely. I, I can't stop studying because I... There's so much stuff. Like every time I turn around, I read the scripture, I'll be like, dang, I just, that's new. Did they just put that in there? They're like, no, nah, that's been in it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, I ain't seen it this whole time. You know, so get yourself some studying tools. Um, you know, I'm working on like the concordance and the vine. I'm working on all those things to help me be a better person and be a better teacher to help other people because i'm not i can't keep it for myself like man that ain't gonna be great like sister Whiffa said i got all this in, in me to just what harbor it like nah like am i a scripture hoarder <laughs> i'm a hoard the scriptures like no I'm, i gotta share it you can have it the studying tools that i use i will share them with you um i am opening okay this is what i'm doing because i said that i have um audible you know so on my audible there are some books that i have used to help me grow and if you yourself want to know what books i have used hit me up because you can share my audible i'm paying for it but you get the resource as well. Like I will share my password with you and you can go in there and listen to the books that I have in my audible. Okay. And if you want to get my information for those that are out in Facebook world or whatever like that, just hit me up on Facebook. Cause I'm there. Um, for those who know me personally, hit me up on my cell phone. I'll send you that information because for me, I can, get things down with audio books better than I can just actually physically sitting down reading it. I get tired. I get sleepy and I'll be like, all right, start reading it, go to sleep. Audio books keep me entertained. But so that's what I will, that's what I want to do. I want to help others. If you saying that you don't have the money, you don't have the resource. I got the resource. I'll let you use mine. God has blessed me to be able to do it. So why not? Right. Um, if there is a study that you would like to have, reach out to your sisters, reach out to your local congregations. You're not going to, it's just not going to happen through osmosis. You know, you have to actually utilize those people that are there. And if you find yourself at a congregation, and I mean, sometimes it happens, you find yourself at a congregation that may not have the resources or the time. That's why you got a whole brotherhood. What they say, one one body, many members, it's so many of us. I did not get where I'm at just because I go to inner city. I have been in inner city. I have studied at East Baltimore. I have gone to their classes at East Baltimore. But then guess what? I don't leave my congregation. I take it back to my congregation and help grow the ministry there. This is sometimes what I see us doing as 
members of the body, we say that we're not being fed at our local congregation and we'll go somewhere else and get excited and zealous and sit in their seats and get all this information and then say we didn't get fed at our other congregation. That's not what you do. You will go, I will go over here to East Baltimore, but I bring it back to my congregation to help grow because it's one body. If we grow, we all grow and use it to help them. You don't take your hairstyle and only say, well, I only got my license in Maryland, so I'm not going to use my license in Kentucky or Tennessee or any. No, you take it with you. So wherever you study at, wherever you find it may have a study that you need, you don't leave your congregation to go there. You go there and bring it back. Okay, that's, that's just, you know. Bless, like it's 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 just gonna help you, okay? Let me just teach you some what they say, some decency and order. Stop church hopping, stop congregation hopping, not church hopping, congregation hopping, okay? Let's cut that out, okay? Let us be useful in our congregations. Let us be the people that God will have us to be, no matter where we are. Paul didn't leave his place where he was ministering at to go, like, I'm only going to stay at Corinth and I'm not going nowhere else. No, he ministered to Corinth. He ministered to the church and over here. And, and that's what he did. We are supposed to minister wherever we go, but we don't be like, oh, I'm just going to leave and go. Like, that's growth, okay? That's, that's growth for you. I learned, I learned that. It took me a minute. Because I was like, I don't have to be, um, only person I had to be loyal to is Christ. But I wasn't even being loyal to Christ if I was leaving the ministry or the place that I saw needed help, you know? So, yeah, you're not being loyal. Like, I'm being loyal. You're being loyal to yourself. You're being selfish, okay? <laughs> so, um, Sister Wilfred, go ahead. <laughs> Yes, it's not. I, I agree with you because that's one of the things I learned. And I'm going to tell you the truth. It, it hasn't been long ago is that everything that God bless you with, you're supposed to bless somebody else. You can't mm -hmm. keep your talents, your abilities, your skills, none of that. You can't keep it to yourself. You got to share it. Don't be selfish mm -hmm. with it. So yep. amen to that. I agree. Everything okay. that God gave you is meant to be shared. It wasn't meant just mm -hmm. to be for you. And not just your children. I'm talking about your coworkers that don't act mm -hmm. nice, that's mean to right. you, your family members that call you a holy roly, whatever. You still <laughs> should share. You should share with them. The ones that call you do-gooders, share with them too, right. no matter what. You share what God gave you because he gave it to you for that purpose. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I didn't hold y'all. I didn't hold y'all over 28 minutes. It's okay, though. Y'all, so for those who left, y'all come back and listen to it later on. It's all good. I ain't even mad. Um, that's what it's here for. It's here for you to come back to it and, you know, learn from it, grow from it. I'm excited, okay? Because this is fitting to be a good year. Um, for anybody who has any prayer requests, please, you know, go ahead and um, you can share those now. Sister Monique, do you have any prayer requests? Uh, there we go. No, not Sister Monique. Who else is on here? I can't see everybody. Let me see gallery. Oh, my own. I got an iPhone user. I'm not sure who that is. If you have a prayer request. <laughs> Sorry, I was oh. taking a book to work. Forgive me. Oh, okay, no problem. Do you have a prayer request? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. But well, we love you and, and grateful for you being here. Um, I don't. I'm not sure who the iPhone user is, but Sister Kayla Whitfield, do you have any prayer requests? No, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Um, Sister Chanel, do you have a prayer request? Yes. Keep my sister um, and our sister uh, Lucy Miller. In your prayers mm -hmm. as she recovers uh, from that that the car accident she was in last uh, this morning actually about two thirty. Oh wow, that's serious. Sister Lord, do you have anything? Any prayer requests? 
Um, I think the iPhone is Sister Beal because I admitted her. Okay. okay. So I think, I think that's Sister Beal. Um, uh, I actually do continue to keep my aunt Constance Stewart in your prayers as she continues to deal with her um, ongoing illness. Right. Um, I got a text from Sister Anita, who wasn't able to join us today, that she has landed and that she is safe. So, you know, um, just, you know, just keeping our sister safe because we know that so much stuff can happen within travel and stuff like that. And, you know, let's just keep all of our sisters in the body and the faith in prayer, like just, just a collective whole of all the congregations because a lot of stuff is happening, you know, in, in this beautiful world that we live in with these not so beautiful people, <laughs> things are happening and it affects us all, right? Like, cause if my sister is hurting, then I'm hurting for her, right? So, you know, let us all just stay prayed up for each other. Next month, I still want everybody, sister, sister Chanel, you gotta be here next month. You still gotta be on next month. Don't try to, don't oh. try to go away. Don't try to go nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. This, 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 girl, this hot and heavy. This better, this, this better than my favorite show. This better than power. This Caleb, is this power. Is. This power right, right here. Right? It's a different kind, it's, but it's definitely the right kind. Yeah, that's a different kind of power. This is better than red <laughs> table talk. <laughs> Brother Winfield say he amen to that. <laughs> so I want y'all to come back. And um, Sister Kayla Whitfield, Sister Monique, all those that are on Facebook. Next month, we'll be, we'll be talking about is the prayer aligned with the will. That is next month's topic is the prayer aligned with the will um and i just want y'all to kind of like put that in your minds right because once you get baptized and then once you become a part of the body and you're here you're you're now open to all this this amazing thing that we call the prayer line right you like the holy the holy spirit intercedes for me in my prayers but we have to also understand that there are our prayers in line with God's will is is it what he wants for our lives I pray about a lot of things some things he'd be like girl stop playing with me like <laughs> like you tripping okay like, I'm like, okay but you know I'm gonna I'm we're gonna talk about it next time because I'm just I'm excited about it whatever you pray about whatever you have put into prayer think about why you have set that prayer up why you have sent that prayer up and if it's been answered think about why it's been answered if it hasn't been answered think about why it hasn't been answered and if it's on the way what are you doing to manifest that because there's work you got to do in your prayer life okay it ain't easy not even praying okay so I thank y'all for coming. I thank y'all for um, sharing in this time with us. Yeah, I held y'all over a little bit. That one was free. <laughs> so I'm just so thankful for y'all. I hope to see y'all next. Um, I'm going to do it on March the 6th. That's the second Sunday. We're going to do it March the 6th. So all of y'all who are able to, please come in, join in. I want y'all here. Sister Whitfield, if you could pray us out and... Yes, ma'am. I got, got I got it. We ready? Oh, but Whitfield said he want to hear about the hot topics. <laughs> yeah, he tell me he 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 like he like Wendy Williams too. <laughs> right, I know that's right. You can share it with him afterwards. <laughs> no, I'm about to tell him what 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 sister was on sister to sister right. stays on sister to sister. <laughs> <laughs> you like what y'all talking about? Wait, I give, get I, I give him a little snippet, like you said. I give him a little snippet, snip. You gonna be like, what y'all talking about? <laughs> like what? Oh my goodness! But I just want to thank y'all, and I hope to see y'all next, sister to sister. So, sister Whitfield, if you could pray us out, sister. 
much. And All right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you all so much. Thank you, sis. I appreciate uh, the platform that you gave me to speak a little something, something. No and um, I'll be on from here on out. Told you I sister good did me now. You're going to keep asking me. I'm going to have to come on and see what's going oh, on. <laughs> on in. So I know what's going on. Look, it's in my blood now. I can't stop. So I'll be here next month. Okay. Let us pray, y'all. Let us pray. Dear wise and righteous father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Lord, that we've had to just come together and discuss uh, uh, that it's not easy, Lord, but we know that you made it possible for us all, Father, to serve you and to do all that you would have us to do, Father, with your Holy Spirit. We pray, oh Lord, Father, that we will continue to uh, let our light shine, Father, that everyone everywhere would know who we are and to whom we belong, Father. And we pray that the love that we share one with another would tell that we are your children. We ask, Father, that you forgive us and that you have mercy upon our souls, Father. And we pray that you bless us and bless our families, Father. Bless our families that are struggling with illnesses, Father. And we pray for Sister Lorik's aunt, who is uh, just continuing to uh, fight an illness, Lord. We pray your hands of comfort and healing be upon her, Father, if it be your will. I pray, oh Lord, Father, that uh, my sister would heal uh, from her um, injuries, uh, Lord, as a result of the motor vehicle accident, Father. But I tell you, I know that it was your way of showing her that you are all powerful and all knowing and all being in every way at the same time, Father. You blessed her to be able to worship you today in spirit and in truth. And for that, we are eternally grateful. We ask, Father, that you continue to love us and Help us to just uh, just grow in the grace and knowledge and just uh, unify ourselves in this sisterhood, Father, and this kinship that we share one with another. Forgive us, O oh Lord, and be with us. Bless each and every family that is represented here on this call. And we ask, Father, that you continue to be with us. Bless us and strengthen us, Father, and forgive us, Father, when we repent and help us to always be walking in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ, in, who name, in whose name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 See y'all. See amen. y'all next. Have a good Sunday. afternoon, y'all. Have a good afternoon. Love everybody, afternoon. and I appreciate the kinship and the fellowship. Have amen. a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See y'all. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.